Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making the UFO design in KSP2. This design is well partly inspired by a lot of news um, because you know the Pentagon have confirmed that UFOs are totally real. So <laughs> this is uh, Kerbal's attempt to make their own variation of the UFO. Um, it will happen to have jet engines and some uh, you know modern or you could say outdated technology for uh, aliens and well, thankfully, Kerbals are green aliens, so it kind of counts as, uh, you know, the st typical standard alien that we have. Um, although they all look a little bit strange and different. Um, anyway, so this is one of my early designs of the UFO. And as you can see, it's uh, somewhat basic compared to what you see in the thumbnail. So um, there were a total of 19 variations of the UFO that I created. Um, and so that goes to show exactly how much um, changes were made. So in this particular design, um, I thought that this was somewhat plain and I ended up just uh, getting rid of it and, and just trying some other things. So there were a couple parts in KSP that you can use to make a kind of saucer shape. And uh, one of them happened to be the heat shields. So I did try those as well, but unfortunately you're unable to color heat shields at the moment. They just happen to have the stock colors. So it's either like this big white one that's inflatable or you have like this uh, brownish kind of, you know, copper looking kind of color. So not very nice. You want to have a, you know, a proper color for a UFO, of course. And, um, and so this is where I'm just going to show you, this is a, your typical jet. So, and um, I ended up using fairings to make the uh, saucer shape because fairings, of course, can be customized. Um, of course, the issue with fairings is that you can't have parts poking out of them when you initially deploy the fairing. And you also need to keep in mind that with the fairings, um, I recommend to not close the fairing on top. Make sure to keep it open. And when you keep it open, your jet engines will work because, of course, the air intake will be able to, you know, pick up air. Um, it's a bit strange the way it works. This took a while to kind of figure out. So again, once the fairings close, jet engines won't receive any air. Uh, but if the fairing is open on the top just a little bit, and I've kind of hidden that with the uh, command pot, and it looks great after that. So as you can see here, I'm starting to use some lights. You know, it's always alien technology happens to have a lot of lights for whatever reason. It's always uh, flashy and gets everyone's attention. Although, <clears throat> all things considered, uh, every time someone films a UFO, it happens to be really low quality camera for some reason. You know, it's uh, very, very odd. You know, we all have decent cameras nowadays, so it makes me a little bit suspicious. Um, but anyway, you know, Ker Kerbals have figured it out. So uh, if anyone like the Pentagon want to, you know, get some inspiration here, well, this is the tech that you need. Um, so this is one of the early flights uh, with this design. And I just loved how inside it, everything is just kind of very lit up. And unfortunately, there's a few issues with the uh, the command pods because w when you launch with this, it it thinks that you're kind of using a different command pod than the one I want. So um, I've kind of put in a one of those, uh, you know, if you press number one on your keyboard, basically it will, it will select the correct pod. Um, so anyway, this is the final design. This is the version 19 of the UFO. So, it, yeah, it's crazy. I can show you the other versions if you wish, or maybe I can include it in a download. Uh, let me know. But anyway, this final version, of course, will be available for download for those of you, or those few of you that happen to still have KSP2. Um, now, do keep in mind that the FPS I was experiencing was around 7 FPS. So, a little bit slow. And, well, if you have a, happen to have a very bad computer and you, uh, you know, want to break it and get a new computer, Try, try loading this in your game and see how you go. Um, but anyway, just a few stats here. So the total parts for this uh, is a total of 268 parts. A lot, Some of those happen to be struts because it's a little bit flimsy. Uh, the total mass is around 255 tons, which is crazy. I didn't even think that this was going to be this heavy. Unfortunately, as you would expect, a fairing has just massive drag. And as a result, I kind of struggled. So... Anyway, I used the combination of rocket engines, rapiers, and your typical turbojet engines here. And I was very concerned because as you can see, we're getting really low on fuel. And you know, we're, we're you know, almost there. Apple apps is, is, is getting high. Um, but as you can see, so I'm not time warping right now. And you just see how slow the, 
the meters per second that's the, you know the acceleration isn't isn't very good um if you wish you can change the engine to be a more powerful rocket engine but in this case i wanted it to be you know not as powerful that way i can kind of easily control it although you know you can obviously use like a thrust limiter for your rocket so that's definitely an option um, but you see how Apoapsis is at 71,000 meters, so I'm like, okay, maybe we have enough fuel to, to get into orbit. Um, and so I was, I was very, very concerned because I've had like multiple attempts. I've changed the designs again 19 times um, just to get to this point. And I was uh, very, very worried. And anyway, I wanted to make this a very, very efficient burn, so I got as close as possible to the Apoapsis, um, although. Really, I should have gotten even closer. And with the remaining fuel, I was just hoping that we had enough. In fact, I was thinking at this point, that maybe we could use the uh, RCS as a kind of final boost if we run out of fuel. I mean, that's always an option. You know, I, I definitely had quite a bit of RCS. I got a one, one of those big, I think medium sized fuel tanks in this particular craft. And you see here, I'm doing a uh, somewhat of a slow burn because I don't want to go too far away and and i don't know i don't want the the ufo to suddenly flip out or crack and get me so nice and steady burn just in case you know you gotta be cautious with this uh buggy game <laughs> and um you happen to know that look how nice this looks look at this this is yeah version 19 i'm quite satisfied with it um obviously as i said the kerbals have made their own uh customizations for the ufo you know wings and stuff um they've made their own improvements so, and here we go. So, fuel is getting really, really low. It's, uh, I don't know if we're going to make it. And Delta V, uh, I don't know. We're, we're almost there though. We are almost there. So, and at this point, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throttle up. Full throttle. Let's just get it over and done with. Otherwise, I could just try launching again. And getting close. Very, very close. And at this point, I think we might make it just... Wow, okay, yep. So, yeah, boof. Yeah, we did it. So we made it to orbit. So this is officially a UFO SSTO. The Kerbals have just made a new invention. Beat that UFOs. Um, I don't know, if, for some reason, apparently in real life, UFOs happen to be flying around in, in random directions. So <clears throat> I don't believe in UFOs, but you do you. Um, of course, UFOs are real in Kerbal Space Program, so this is a first, or at least in KSP2 it is. Um, again, this isn't modded or anything. I did see that there was like some mod in KSP1 for a uh, UFO, and, but I think this turned out pretty good. I mean, fairings. I mean, who knew? You can use fairings like this. So I guess you can do all sorts of designs. Um, and unfortunately, I had to turn on the cockpit manually here because, you know, when you actually turn it on in the... When you're actually building it and then you launch it just turns off for whatever reason that's a small thing but yeah i just had to do that now and look at all those engines that's quite a lot of engines i mean surely i could have um, changed that and maybe added a some other engine instead of the rapiers or i did try replacing the turbojet engines with 100 percent rapiers but of course rapiers don't have as much uh thrust so you know i kind of opted for a balance of the two um, so yeah, just I'm, at this point, I'm just enjoying the view and I just love the reflections with the lights. Um, yeah, so with the lights, make sure that when you place it, um, try to rotate the light so that it's actually facing the opposite direction. And that's what creates that nice real reflection on the fairing. So it's a little, you know, thing I discovered by accident, but you know, it makes a nice little just lighting effect there so tips for anyone who likes lighting um but anyway look at this i wanted to see how it looks in the dark and it, it really does stand out it's very unique i haven't seen anything like it that kind of reminds me of like a i don't know some futuristic ship well i guess it is futuristic it's ufo it's a ufo but what you've all been waiting for the hidden little compartment on the bottom there with the fairing we are going to give this thing a go so at this point, I'm just going to open it and surprise, surprise, we've got Dunny in there. <laughs> uh, these Kerbals, I've chosen them specifically. If you're Australian, uh, yeah, you should kind of understand what Dunny is. Uh, it's kind of like a slang thing, but 
uh, for those of you that know, just uh, put it in the comments. But look at the lighting. Look at that. It's like a theater for the Kerbal. Yeah, the lighting is pretty good. You can, of course, change the colors um, for the different lights. And I think you could also make them flash as well. But I didn't want to change what... Yeah, this was strange. I don't know what just happened there. I literally just undocked. And then <laughs> it, it, a Kraken struck again. Here we go. We just added an extra 1,000 meters per second or so. And we are leaving the Kerbal uh, Sphere of Influence. That was so unexpected. Now, there's an issue with docking. Unfortunately, you have to time warp. Otherwise, if you don't time warp and you undock, your, your ship just destroys. So anyway, at this point, I was just trying to use the RCS just to see how much uh, speed we can um, increase by. And... Well, the crab was happy that, well, they are going to be stranded forever. This little craft, um, I just, it's basically just a little rover that doesn't really have any uh, interesting features. I mean, I figured, you know, if, if it's a UFO, you're going to need an alien inside and obviously they're going to have to go around and, uh, you know, prod certain people. So <laughs> that's what this Kerbal is for, prodding. But obviously they uh, they went the wrong direction by accident. You know, unfortunately, that's due to the silly krakens everywhere. But yeah, I mean, if you have a look at the orbit here, we we, we got really uh, projected quite far. So <laughs> here we go, just spinning the Kerbal. Um, I love the colors. Yeah, I think this is a good combination. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if you think any other color would have um, been better for the, the flying saucer. Yeah, Kerbal scratching their face there. Things aren't very good for you, fella. You're staying there forever. But anyway, I think that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, links in the description to download this craft if you do have KSB2. Hope you enjoy. And, well, be careful. The FPS is going to be a little bit low. Uh, there are some upcoming updates, so maybe that will improve. But, yeah, see how it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And see you next time. Take care.